Good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 16th of November. It's a feria in the 33rd week of the church's year, and it's the memorial of St. Margaret of Scotland. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is taken from the second book of Maccabees, it's chapter 6. Eleazar, one of the most foremost teachers of the law, a man already advanced in years and of most noble appearance, was being forced to open his mouth wide to swallow pig's flesh. But he, resolving to die with honour rather than to live disgraced, went to the block of his own accord, spitting the stuff out, the plain duty of anyone with courage to reject what is not lawful to taste, even from a natural tenderness for his own life. Those in charge of the impious banquet, because of their long-standing friendship with him, took him aside and privately urged him to have a meal brought of a kind he could properly use, prepared by himself, and only pretend to eat the portions of sacrificial meat as prescribed by the king. This action would enable him to escape death by availing himself of an act of kindness prompted by their long friendship. But having taken a noble decision worthy of his years and the dignity of his great age and the well-earned distinction of his grey hairs, worthy too of his impeccable conduct from boyhood and above all of the holy legislation attached, established by God himself, he publicly stated his convictions, telling them to send him at once to Hades. Such pretense, he said, does not square with our time of life. Many young people would suppose that Eliadza, at the age of ninety, had conformed to the brief spell of life. They might have conformed to, for the sake of a paltry brief spell of life, might themselves be led astray on my account. I should only bring defilement and disgrace on my old age, even though for the moment I avoid it. I avoid execution by man. I can never, living or dead, elude the grasp of the Almighty. Therefore, if I am a man enough to quit this life here and now, I shall prove myself worthy of my old age, and I shall have left the young and noble example of how to make a good death, eagerly and generously, for the venerable and holy laws. With these words he went straight to the block. His escort, so recently well disposed towards him, turns against him after this declaration, which they regarded as sheer madness. Just before he died under the blows, he groaned aloud and said, The Lord, whose knowledge is holy, sees clearly that though I might have escaped death, the agonies of body I now endure under this bludgeoning in, bludgeoning in my soul, I am glad to suffer because of the awe which he inspires in me. This was how he died, leaving his death an example of a nobility and a record of virtue, not only for the young, but for the great majority of the nation. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. Again, on the road to Jerusalem. Jesus entered Jericho and was going through the town when a man whose name was Zacchaeus made his appearance. He was one of the senior tax collectors and a wealthy man. He was anxious to see what kind of man Jesus was, but he was too short and could not see him for the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to catch a glimpse of Jesus who was to pass that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and spoke to him, Zacchaeus, come down, hurry, because I must stay at your house today. And he hurried down and welcomed him joyfully. They all complained when they saw what was happening. He's gone to stay at a sinner's house, they said. But Zacchaeus stood his ground and said to the Lord, Look, sir, I'm going to give half my property to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody, I will pay him back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek out and save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. We hear two stories of brave men today. One a brave man sticking to his principles, the other a brave man facing change 
and making new decisions and sticking to them. First case is the martyrdom of the old man Eliezer, 90 years old, and he won't go along with the pretense of his executioners to pretend to eat uh, pork because he says it will precisely mislead all the young people. It's a sign of the great bravery and value of martyrdom. And all through the Christian years, this story of Eliadza often resounds. Though note in this story, there's no sense of the afterlife, whereas for the Christian, it's precisely the promise of the afterlife that gives it the fullness of meaning. But it's the New Testament story where we see a man challenged. Zacchaeus has gone ahead, gone up a tree, and Jesus says, I'm coming to stay at your house. I'm choosing you. When people all complain, Eliezer, uh, big pun, Zacchaeus rises to the occasion and full of generosity, he pledges and it's clear that he will carry out that he will give half his wealth away and repay anybody he's cheated. And Jesus says, thank, thank God, salvation has come to this house today, to the house of Zacchaeus. And this is a sign so often to us that Jesus does challenge us and it's when we respond to the challenge we find new life, new, new depth, new height. It's not always easy, the challenges that we, we wish we could avoid. But that's the heart of the Christian message, that Jesus is with us, we're with Jesus in his body. And challenges come our way to live our life, our faith, more deeply. And we pray to God that we will have the courage to do that. A person who did do that was St Margaret of Scotland. She came from Hungary and she was escaping a uh, certain death and she found refuge with Malcolm in Scotland. She married him and had eight children. And then when he died, she went into a convent, spent the rest of her life doing uh, substantial good works. Again, a sign of somebody who follows through, both in terms of this witness to a happy and good marriage and a good parent, and then going on to a life devoted to service of others. An example to us all. We turn to our bidding prayers. Response, you are our Saviour and our God. As Christians called to share the life of God, let us praise the Lord Jesus, the High Priest of our faith. You are our Saviour and our God. Almighty King, you have baptised us and made us a royal priesthood. May we offer you a constant sacrifice of praise. You are our Saviour and our God. Help us to keep your commandments so that through your Holy Spirit we may dwell in you and you in us. You are our Saviour and our God. Everlasting wisdom, come to us, dwell with us and work in us today. You are our Saviour and our God. Help us to be considerate and kind. Grant that we may bring joy, not pain, to those we meet. You are our Saviour and our God. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Look with favour on our morning prayer, Lord, and in your saving love, let your light penetrate the hidden places of our hearts. May no sordid desires darken our minds, renewed and enlightened as we are by your heavenly grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. God bless.